Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. NPSH and cavitation in centrifugal pumps. In this video, you will learn what is NPSH, what is cavitation and what causes it, what is the effect of cavitation in centrifugal pumps. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Every chemical and process engineer must be aware of the two terms NPSH and cavitation when they deal with centrifugal pumps either for sizing or operation. Pumps can pump only liquids, not vapors. The satisfactory operation of pump requires that vaporization of a liquid being pumped does not occur at any conditions of operation. This is so desired because when a liquid vaporizes, its volume increases very much. For example, when water vaporizes at room temperature, its volume increases by 1700 times at the same temperature. Hence, the pump must be free of vapors if it has to pump effectively. How and when the vapors form in the pump? Before you get to know the answer to that question, you must recall one important property of a liquid while discussing pump operation, vapor pressure. At a specific combination of pressure and temperature, the liquid molecules turn into vapor. Take water for example. When heated to 100 degrees centigrade, at atmospheric pressure, bubbles of water form, turning a liquid into vapor. This indicates the temperature and vapor pressure have been reached and water will start to boil. The pressure which the liquid exerts on the surroundings is dependent on its temperature. Consider the container shown in this figure partially filled with liquid. There is a constant pressure acting on the surface of the liquid. This pressure is called vapor pressure of the liquid. The vapor pressure of the liquid is a unique characteristic of every liquid and increases with increasing temperature. The vaporization begins when the vapor pressure of the liquid at the operating temperature equals the external system pressure which in an open system is always equal to the atmospheric pressure. Any increase in external pressure or rise in operating temperature can induce vaporization and the pump stops pumping. Thus the pump always needs to have sufficient amount of suction head present to prevent this vaporization at the lowest pressure point in the pump.
the rise in temperature and fall in pressure induces vaporization. The pressure at which the first sign of vapors are formed on the pump suction side is an important parameter and the head corresponding to this pressure is referred to as net positive section head. How do you prevent a liquid turning into vapor in your pump and affecting pump performance? NPSH is viewed as a measure to prevent liquid vaporization at the lowest pressure point in the pump. Net positive section head is the total head in meters or feet at the suction flange of the pump less the vapor pressure at the suction temperature converted into meter or feet of liquid absolute. The NPSH is always positive since it is expressed in terms of absolute fluid column height in meter. The term net refers to the actual pressure head at the pump suction flange and not the static suction head. NPSH required is denoted as NPSH R. NPSH R is the function of pump design. Where do you measure the NPSH? Since it is a measure of the head, its value is dependent on the point of measurement. It is measured at the pump section flange as illustrated in the sketch with the green arrow. Because it is the point at which the velocity of the liquid is maximum as it accelerates the eye of the impeller. This figure illustrates the variation of the pressure from suction to discharge typically occurring in a centrifugal pump. The reduction of suction pressure PS at pump inlet is due to the liquid acceleration at the eye. Note, in spite of reduction in pressure at the suction line, net positive head is available at the eye of the imbuller to prevent bubble formation. One should not rush to the conclusion that vapor will not form once the net positive suction head required is available. It is just a point noticed during the pump testing at which vapor formation disappears. The net positive suction head available in PSHA should always be greater than or equal to NPSH required plus margin. The golden rule is to ensure there is always sufficient margin available to prevent cavitation. The NPSH concept can be explained through a sketch as depicted in this figure, which highlights the factors that affect in PSH available. The total head available is contributed by the section head and the head due to pressure in the section vessel. This head is diminished by the vapor pressure and losses in the section piping and losses due to mass acceleration of the liquid as it approaches the suction eye. As the liquid passes from the pump suction to the eye of the impeller, the velocity increases and the pressure decreases. There are also pressure losses due to shock and turbulence. As the liquid strikes the impeller, the centrifugal force of the impeller vein further increases the velocity and decreases the pressure. So broadly, there are two kinds of losses. One, friction losses. Two, losses due to acceleration. The NPSH required is positive head in meter of liquid 
available at the pump section to overcome the pressure losses and keep the liquid above the vapor pressure. At what flow rate you will calculate NPSH or friction losses and losses due to mass acceleration varies with flow rates. Since the pump is designed to run at the rated flow rate, NPSHR must be calculated at the rated flow rate of the pump. The NPSH variation with flow rate is illustrated in this figure. The line in red color shows the relationship between net positive section heat required and the volumetric flow rate. Pump manufacturers supply this curve to the customers. It is one of the parameters along with several pump characteristics provided for a given pump. For example, the NPSH required at 50 cubic meter per hour is 4 meters. What happens to the NPSH required when the speed of the pump is increased? When the speed of the pump increases, the velocity of the liquid goes up and the pressure or the head comes down. Now we ask yourself a question. What happens if the NPS is available, falls below the required value? The pump gets into cavitation. What is cavitation? The term cavitation implies a dynamic process of formation of bubbles inside the liquid, their growth and subsequent collapse as the liquid flows through the pump. Vaporization of the liquid can occur in centrifugal pumps when the local static pressure reduces below that of the vapor pressure of the liquid at the pumping temperature. The reduction of static pressure in the internal suction system occurs mainly due to the rise in velocity at the impeller I. Have a look at this figure. The suction pressure of the pump decreases as the liquid approaches the eye of the impeller and just at the eye the pressure falls below the vapor pressure. This causes the bubble formation. If there is no change in the operating conditions, new bubbles continue to form and old bubbles grow in size. The bubbles then get carried in the liquid as it flows from the impeller eye to the impeller exit tip along the vein trailing edge. Due to impeller rotation action, the bubbles attain very high velocity and eventually reach the regions of high pressure within the impeller where they start collapsing. As the vapor bubbles move along the impeller veins, the pressure around the bubbles begins to increase until a point is reached where the pressure on the outside of the bubble is greater than the pressure inside the bubble. Then the bubble collapses. The process is not an explosion but rather an implosion. Hundreds of bubbles collapse at approximately the same point on each impeller vein. Bubbles collapse non-symmetrically 
such that the hammering action occurs. The highly localized hammering effect can pit the pump impeller. After the bubble collapses, a shock wave emanates outward from the point of collapse. This kind of cavitation is known as in PSH available insufficiency. Cavitation damage to a centrifugal pump may range from minor pitting to catastrophic failure. The damage depends on the pump to fluid characteristics, energy levels and duration of the cavitation. Most of the damage usually occurs within the impeller, specifically to the leading phase of the non-pressure side of the veins. The net effect absorbed on the impeller vein will be poke marked, rough surface and severe thinning of the veins from metal erosion. This figure illustrates how cavitation causes thinning of the impeller veins. This figure shows how a hole has formed on the impeller due to cavitation. Key takeaways from this discussion. Cavitation must be prevented to ensure pump reliability and sustained performance. The best way to prevent cavitation is to get your design right in the beginning of the design process. The pump and the connected system layout helps you to analyze and make suitable changes to achieve the desired NPSs available. Once the pump is designed and installed, it is rarely easy to find a solution to cavitation. Even if a solution is found, it will be costly. Solutions such as parallel pump option is often difficult to implement due to space constraints in the plant. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career-oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.